What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Factory Town. And as I said, it's a bit different. Fields, fields, and more fields. And I don't think that's enough fields anyway, but we'll see how it goes. I've tried to do uh, math. <laughs> Meh. I don't know if it's the right math, but it's better than nothing. Of course, for now, uh, additional shoots will increase dramatically how much of the goods are coming out. Using, where appropriate, the liquids as well. So you can see I have got farms that... I say farms. Yeah, farms. That are going into the food processing plants, then individually into their retrospective pastures, and from there into the kitchens. I'm going to have multiple kitchens now. Uh, as the comments were mentioned, and thank you very much once again for that, uh, you get the kitchen doing the first step and another kitchen doing the second step, and it's much cleaner. Now, what you can see there as well on that left-hand side, there is a, a small, not fully functioning, but small cotton field as well. That, of course, is producing the cloth for the cheese. So it's got its own cloth production for the kitchen and the cheese, and then the milk, of course, comes from there. Two, uh, sorry, three pastures are creating manure or fertilizer, as it's called, at the minute. Of course, the last one being also for milk, but that is done via the pipes. Once again, thank you to the viewer for letting me know about that. It also works for all the drinks as well, which is a game changer and should mean that the surface stays a lot cleaner moving forward. Now, unfortunately, the sound when I was playing, my software that I used to record has been updated. And for some reason, the update made it default to muting everything. So the game sound is missing for a little bit. Uh, so I have put in some background music automatically for the video. So it's not just me and nothing. Apologies for the sound effects missing on that. And it shouldn't hopefully last for too long. Now, the idea, obviously, is to provide them with the best foods you can. Of course, the cheese chicken sandwich is the thing we've already achieved. But they also will accept the raw materials as well and the bits up until that. So I want to try and do a bit of everything. So you can see I'm chucking a kitchen in now in between. This kitchen is going to cook that bread, cooked chicken and cheese into the sandwiches. But I would also like to have enough stock that I can send the bread, the chicken and the cheese separately to the shop to be sold. Of course, that's not going to work because the sandwiches needs to be sold at the tavern, not the food, uh, the market. Uh, but also, I want to be able to send them the flour, the milk and the raw chicken, along with uh, raw beef, raw eggs, etc., because they can use it all, and all of it adds to their happiness, which is what we're after, right? We need to get that pushed up so we can increase the population, so we can do more and win the game. Just rearranging this, because what I'm trying to do is push the goods, as I've just done, but this time exactly the same, but in a straight line towards the tavern. Um, that way, it should uh, help us move the sandwiches in. From here, I'm then going to have to try and think of a way of making the overflow of the goods, if there is any, to the market itself. Now, the, the, the flour that's coming in for the bread, actually, is pretty poor. I want that to be full all the time. And this is where this episode or the coming episodes significantly increase the production lines because... I don't like seeing gaps on the belts, especially a chute. The chute is pretty quick. It's certainly quicker than that uh, cloth belt. But gaps in it means that we're struggling to produce a decent amount. It should be always full or overflowing. In fact, you should need to be able you should need two or three chutes coming out of each of the production lines to keep up with demand. You can see there is a decent stream of grain coming out of those farms, but you will find that if you put another chute there as well, that will equally be full. Now, in the meantime, we need to grow more, so we are growing more grain to make sure that we have enough flour to give us enough bread so that we can sell all of the individual products to the civilization in all of their forms. It doesn't pay you, strangely, to just give them the best form. As I said, you have to give them all variants of that, and that's what we're going to do. 
So this field is going to go into its own food processing plant. So each one gets its own there, which should, well, it, it will double the grain production, obviously, and therefore double the flour production. But again, remember that multiple shoots will work as well. Now, we also need to keep an eye on the fertilizer that's coming through. You can see that is being used up quite quickly. We do only have those three pastures producing that, two of which are just making the fertilizer, the third one uh, being a byproduct of the cows producing milk. Now, because the cloth is in such low demand, uh, as in cloth to cotton to cloth and then cloth to cheese as you can see it's backing up the excess i'm just throwing into the general store and selling it directly as raw cotton wool to the it's what it's cotton yeah it's cotton uh, to the to the people and that's giving us some extra cash right red coins because it's general store it's goods not food um but it's not diminishing the cloth it's not diminishing the cheese so we are benefiting from it and that's what you need to keep an eye on right this thing's broke because when I put it down, it was next to a berry bush. So it thinks it's a berry forester. Me switching the trigger there and making it work to forester and then turning it up to 10 people. There you go. We now have two functioning forestries, which we're going to have a lot of wood for a very, very, very long time. Now, mines are something that we need to get in. They are much more beneficial for all of the resources, as you can see. But we're missing a vital ingredient to build them, and that is pickaxes. It requires 10 pickaxes per mine. So what I'm going to do now is rip this down a little bit and actually get some pickaxes made and stored. Not sold, just stored. Then we can start building mines. It means then that all of these areas where we've got people collecting the iron or coal, stone, not gold or anything like that yet, but we will get there. Um, you just put a mine next to it, put people in that, and it's much, much more efficient and a lot faster. It still does use the resources. They're not infinite, to my knowledge. Um, but it's definitely better than using random people that keep walking into each other because they're a bit... They're not the smartest, Um things to be honest and they remind me of nuggets i don't know if anybody of you have ever played the game i've played it on my channel quite a lot um called the universe sim the characters in there are called nuggets they are basically a head uh not quite attached to a body with no arms and legs well yeah these guys look the same so maybe the nuggets have transferred from the universe sim game into factory town who knows so after ripping out quite a lot of the old uh, stone masonry that was happening over here because I'm prepping for the mines, uh, I've just got, because we had so much wood, I've thrown in a lumber mill next to this general store. And this lumber mill now is going to turn the wood into wooden planks. The wooden planks then can be sold at the general store as well. So that is a crap ton more red coins we're going to get in. As you can see, it is running immediately, the lumber mill. Now I'm using three outputs for the lumber mill in order to keep up with the demand to throw that um, planks into the general store to be sold to the civilization and making them very happy. You're not getting much for it in terms of score. It looks like one, one red coin per... But it all adds up, and it's it's a byproduct, isn't it? We we already have too much wood, so if it's stagnant and we're making nothing, we're better off making one coin per, as long as it doesn't hinder any of the other uh, buildings or produce that we're trying to create. So that's what I'm trying to do it here. You you go for I'm aiming for a goal of a product, making that product, and if there is extra, I will then throw that at something else. Uh, the I'm sure there's more efficient ways of doing it, but that's how I like to play it anyway, so there we are. This is a stonemason, and I'm going to throw in a load of different random people, as you can see, because we're not able to get the mines yet. They're going to put some stone into there. The stone will then get pre pressed into stone slabs through a stonemason, and hopefully we'll be able to get that over that um, chute into that same general store and get even more red coins. Just like that. 
So now that will be another couple of coins. I think they're maybe two coins each. Can't remember off the top of my head, but there's certainly um, some red coins available from there. There might be one, actually, it looks like. It does look like one. Never mind. But again, it's still more red coins. And red coins are used for leveling lands and doing all that sort of stuff. And that is going to be definitely something I'm interested in. Because I'm not bothered about building on slopes and steeps and hills. I'd rather just flatten the whole ground and uh, build on a nice flat surface. Okay, so with the next farm along that row that I placed in, it is going to be a herb farm. This farm then will throw the herbs directly into uh, two things, actually. But the first one is going to be for making the next level of research. So there is the natural research or the nature research, which requires herbs and books. There is also the engineering research, which requires... Uh, I believe it's iron ingots and books. So for the nature research, which is a research depicted by the tree on the icons up there in the top left-hand corner. Books, obviously, is the original starting research. The orange cog is for the engineering research. The tree is for the nature research. And we, of course, need to do that. Now, I'm just jumping back over here to make sure these are flowing better. Make... The, we I don't mind stuff backing up if it's a resource that we need, i.e. is the fertilizer at the minute. Um, but I want to make sure that the cheese, the, the, the cows are getting everything they can so that we don't run out of milk. Over there to the right as well, you can see finally that other field is running for the wheat, so or grain, sorry. So both of those are now producing the flour as well. Still a very empty shoot bit disappointing but it's progress nevertheless from where we were at now I ripped down this farm to replace it for apple trees because we need to I'm gonna do the apple juice now get all the juices out there because it's pretty simple as well though I did make a mistake this is a farm building you don't use a farm building for the bushes or the trees you used a forester the forester also takes more land um, so when I actually upgrade this, I'll be not as efficient as it should be. Um, but it's still worth warranting that the size of a field and the size of a forestry are different. Now, I'm a bit confused because at the minute I'm still not worked out that you don't use a farm to harvest trees. You use the forest to harvest trees. And issues with water on the residents and a few other things actually, but mainly the residents to make sure everybody always has water. Uh, I've now moved the water towers, the wells, over to a water source, which means they're more efficient. And then I did this random pattern. It looks pretty. I don't know if it's any good. The idea, though, is that there is like 10 wells now, and they will be hopefully plumbing in the entire civilization so that every single house gets water, but also... Um, that it's easy enough to, when I extend the houses out, that the pipes match up and you can do it from there. Let's see how that works. Obviously, it always goes to the furthest point first and the furthest port. Once that backs up, it then does the next one and the next one and so on and so forth. Now, with the amount of uh, wells we've got, the, the water shouldn't run out anytime soon. It's also pushing into this uh, lumber workshop, lumber mill workshop. Yeah, love them. To make uh, paper. Because we need paper to make the books with the leather or cloth, but obviously we're going to go for cloth. Uh, and then we add that to the medicine, which you can see coming in there on that chute. That makes the nature books and that goes straight into the school. And there you go. I've replaced the farm for the forester now, so it's actually working as planned. Um, but you can see there is a few gaps where the trees can still be planted over the farm because the forester is bigger than a farm. Also, it doesn't appear that they need the uh, fertilizer as well, which is good. Tree planters, of course, increase efficiency. It's not a fixed thing, though. So we have a kitchen set up here, and this kitchen's job is simple. It's going to take any of the berries or apples and pears, oh my, uh, in. 
and turn them into a juice. Then underground, I will pipe in the pipes to move that. I think there's pears, apples, yes, berries. I think that's all of them. But you can see there's already berry juice being exported there. Just need to wait to see. I'm not sure why I'm confused here. Obviously can't figure out why there's no apple juice coming out. Probably not turned it on. Now it is a long pipe, but it does the job right. And it's, um, how do we say, like, yeah, I've, I've broke some of it. Because it's not, it's not coming out like it's supposed to. But it starts working again, don't panic. Lots of jiggery pokery, but there we go. So we've got apple juice and grape juice or berry juice coming in now as well. So that's two liquids along with water that they're obviously getting permanently. And you can see the sandwiches are going as well. But there is a bit of a backlog. These belts are a little bit slow. Um, and you can see the flour is actually backed up as well. But that's because the whole process for the sandwiches is backed up, not because we're producing more of it. So I need to rethink this to make sure that we get excess goes elsewhere and it's not being wasted or backed up because the backup is a waste of funds i've built an additional forester to allow for the next trees when i can afford them of course um to be placed in we can see we've got a fire temple as well uncovering a lot of the areas and a few of these air stones and more of the magical mana stuff coming in as well which we'll start collecting very soon all of that stuff though i'm waiting for the mines before i even bother trying um, and then they go into a temple to do various different things and make more end game resources or artifacts for now i'm looking what we got 283 out of 306 population we are capped we're not capped sorry we, we can build 10 more houses um Happiness is around 335 to 340. 520 is to get to level 8, so we're a ways off there. Research, we're way behind. We're only on level 4, pushing to level 5. The rails and the iron wheels, though, are... Uh, well, they're very easy to actually do. We can easily do them. I just haven't got round to doing it yet because I was ripping down a lot of the stuff I already built and rebuilding it. Now, though, I think we do have some visibility and capability of actually making that happen. You can see there over on the left-hand side, we are making sandwiches, but the excess bread is now bypassing the kitchen and going into the general store. So we are doing that. It's sort of doing the same with the chicken as well, but I'll be honest, it's not the best setup. But it is working, so we are selling both chicken, bread, and the chicken cheese sandwiches. So it's progress, but it's not probably the best progress. I put some more houses down, though I, I swear I just said, unless I was way behind, I need to put another 10 down. As long as they're connected to a road, you are still in range, so it's fine. Of all of the shops, schools, uh, and what's it called, the town hall type thing. For now, I'm filling this in. I don't have a plan on, or I didn't have a plan on how I wanted to build the houses out, actually. So I'm just making it up as I go along here a little bit. Squeezing them in this segment here. I've got space, so why not? Um, and it also, they should level up pretty quick as well, right? Because we've got loads and loads and loads of goodies for them. Trying to square it out, though. I want the houses to all be a nice, like a, like a nice block. Very American, I think, where they have the houses in blocks, not like estates in the UK, where they're all kind of wonky lines. Um, but a nice rectangle square of houses, and then all the goods are plumbed into or logistic to that simple square. Now 45 out of 46, so we've definitely caught up with the houses. Working on the pier field, but it's taking time because it's very expensive. And the don't produce constant, you can see there, there are gaps. It's not a constant process, so don't be surprised if that is the case. I'm not sure how we can increase efficiency much more on that because there is all the tree planters. There is one strip missing, but they're all tree planted, so that should be the cap. But we have made progress anyway. We've now got the medicine, the berries, the juices. We've got pears coming as well, along with the water upgrades and many other things going, as well as the population dramatically increasing now, 372 people. But we are at time now for the episode, so thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments, welcome as always. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please do share. 
the niche on this game is very small, but it is great fun. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.